This is Nadine, bringing you Ventura Vibe, a podcast featuring the local treasures of people and places that make our community here in Ventura so special. I've got interviews, games, community resources, and volunteer opportunities to get us connected. So let's get started. I'm back recording some new episodes from home. On today's show, I'll be interviewing Christine Burke, community leader and co-founder of a local nonprofit. I will resume the game segment. We all need a little fun back in our lives. And we'll see if there's any volunteer opportunities in the community chess segment. So let's get started. Recording remotely with me today is Christine Burke, community leader and co-founder of local nonprofit, Caphrodite Community Collective. So glad you could join me today, Christine. Thank you, it's really nice to be here. What is Caphrodite Community Collective? Well, uh, we are a space, basically, that is fostering community and we were born out of some, uh, I guess you would say some, some meetings after um, a, the cafe closed, um, Ambrosia by Caphrodite closed. We, um, the, the community wanted to come back and, and say, no, hey, we really want you to be here. We really want this to be a, uh, something that we can do together. And so basically, the, ca- the community collective, it's a sustainable, supporting, and welcoming space for the community to come and meet e- each other, to create together, to collaborate about things, hold events, really just t- to foster this somewhat lost art of community and community building. I am all about community. So mm-hmm. is that the mission, to foster community, a sense of community? I, I would say yes, that's, that's the main, if you want to uh, bring it down to just a few words, it's to foster community. Um, and you can find on our website, our vision says it's to provide a safe and welcoming place for community members to connect and grow. We're committed to inspiring and supporting the imaginative, creative, and diverse. And yeah, so we, we really, really believe that connecting with others around us is the next art, really. Yes. So how did the collective part get started? Well, like I was saying, um, we had a cafe. I had a cafe here. I tried a business and it didn't quite work out. And the the community was very sad and, and said, hey, you know, how do we keep you open? How do we keep you open? And I said, well, I think really the only way for this space to stay open is for us to keep it open and not me to keep it open on my own. And so we held these open forums meetings in our, in, in the backyard of uh, what's now the collective and people, it, it nearly brought me to tears. People, people were saying all of the things that I had wanted in the first place to have the, the actual business be, which was, you know, a safe space where people could meet and, and do things together and, and since everybody, and, and do it in a sustainable way and do it with the, um, with the thought that arts are really important, that, um, you know, we could have music and we could have um, other kinds of performances, also book readings and those kinds of things. It, it grew out of those meetings that we had in the backyard. Oh, so who are the people that were uh, supporting you? Are these employees? Are they neighbors? Are they uh, customers? <laughs> yes, they're all, all of them. <laughs> oh, wow, that's awesome. People, and it's really people from all over Ventura. It's not just people in Midtown, mm-hmm. which is where we're located. Um, we have people from all over Ventura County even. We have, I have on my board... Um, a farmer who is from Fillmore and a, um, a writer who lives in Ojai and um, a local teacher who works for the Ventura Unified and 
a retired fireman who um, lives down uh, on the west side. So um, those are those are the people on my board. And then the community members are um, everything from just individuals who really want to support this kind of idea that um, food and um, art and community is a vital part of of life and and to foster that. So um, I was going to say uh, we have people like individual people, and we have nonprofits. We have um, other just people who want to support it, even if they aren't necessarily having events here, which is what um, being a supporter is, is, is they, they're entitled to have or gift. That's another element of our um, ideas or ideals, I should say, is that we're part of a gift economy. And that is where um, if you're supporting the cafe, you can give gift one of your event times to a musician, say, or to a, a teacher who wants to give a workshop on how to cook whatever they wanted to cook. Or Wow. So yeah. the space is open for people to have a variety of experiences. So you've had, what sorts of events have <laughs> you hosted? Let's go with specifics. Okay. So we've had um, book readings, We've had um, music events like concerts. Um, we have had fundraisers. We have had um, just nonprofit meetings. We've had um, workshops where people have learned how to make tortillas from scratch. Um, so you allow people into the kitchen? <laughs> um, no, they didn't actually need the kitchen for oh. it. We cooked, we cooked in the kitchen, but... Um, the kitchen part is one of those things where if someone's interested in using the kitchen, they have to go through a training to, to do it. But um, you also have to have a, a health department uh, certificate and, you know, all kinds of fun stuff <laughs> to I'm work sure. in the kitchen. Yes. And it's been a little bit difficult since the whole coronavirus opportunity has uh, overtaken our lives. I'm sure. What have um, been some of the challenges? Well, having events, yes. know, people gathering, um, people coming inside, that's been a difficulty that we just allowed, we just started allowing people to come back inside when we're open because we're also mm -hmm. open on Saturdays as a cafe or as a, not a cafe, but a, a coffee shop with pastries and coffee drinks and, and uh, sometimes like acai bowls and, and little, little breakfasty things and little lunch like things. We have soup and and the, the like, but um, talking about some of the challenges with the uh, COVID restrictions and in your indoor space. Yes. So what we did is we we just kind of focused all most of it as soon as the the um, COVID opportunity happened. We scrambled a bit to see like, well, how do we actually continue to exist if what we're here to do is to have people gather and they're telling us nobody can gather. Uh, we decided well. Let's figure out a way to, to gather outside in a very um, physically distant situation. And, and we have a backyard that is really charming. We've done a little bit of uh, artistic um, found wood fence sprucing up and, and have some tables out back. And, and it's a huge space. So we have enough room for people to socially disperse at up to 50 people to socially oh, distance. That's a, a very big space. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Very good. So I can imagine you, you can have a lot of uh, great outdoor events, weather mm -hmm. permitting, music yeah. and readings. Yeah, we've had weddings here. People have had their, uh, their reception out back. Oh. Um, yeah, with enough um, pop-up tents and a little bit of decoration. It's really amazing how an outside space can, can wow. change. Wow. Now, you have an event coming up very soon. Can you tell us about that? Is sure. that still happening? It is still happening. Okay. Um, we have, of course, everyone's going to have to wear masks and things, but we've, we've gotten quite a few artisans uh, to come and offer up a, a Midtown Arts and Crafts Fair 
and we'll have live music. We have some um, acapella barbershop quartet coming. Ooh. We have some um, possibly some ukulele performers and some other bands and, and musicians who are play. And then we have food. We'll have hot lunch and coffee, drinks, and all kinds of good stuff. And then we have all like both artisan and, and small businesses who will be uh, selling things in booths. And, and yeah. is this, uh, what's the purpose? Was there a theme or uh, just well, to build community? Continuing on that uh, whole fostering uh, community, situ- you know, uh, mission. And do you incorporate some of your neighbors that are nearby? Are they involved? We definitely let them all know yeah. and um, encourage them to be ready for extra people to be coming on that day, which yeah. is November 28th from 9 to 2 p.m. Okay. Yeah. All right. Any extra precautions you have to consider? Yes. As we yeah. enter, as, as we are now in the purple tier. I guess. Yes, we definitely do. We, we're, everyone is, is uh, required to wear a mask. And um, we won't let more than what is safe where people can be six feet apart and um, in terms of how many people can come into the back area at a time, which we can just, you know, kind of like like the stores are doing or, or other like farmers markets are doing. You just keep people yeah. in a line if you need to. And, okay. and they, it usually goes pretty fast because people go in, see what they like, see what they don't, buy yeah. stuff, go out. And yeah. I always appreciate when they have actual markings or little circles to stand on because I personally cannot tell six feet. <laughs> I, I have distance. Uh, I cannot tell what a distance measurement would be. Yeah, thank you. Um, we'll we'll be, be sure to put those out for you. <laughs> okay. I, I think people appreciate yeah. those markers. Okay. We're going to take a little break. When we come back, I'm going to wrap up the interview ask Christine where she gets her Ventura vibe on, and we will play a little game. So stay tuned. This is Nadine. Thanks for listening to Ventura Vibe, a podcast celebrating the local treasures of Ventura. With me today is Christine Burke co-founder of Caphrodite Community Collective. We've been talking about uh, an event coming up in November. If people want to find out more about this event, where can they go for more details? Well, they can call us on 805-651-3884. Or they can find, uh, I believe it's on our website. If it's not, I need to get it on there right away. Definitely on our social media accounts. Did you just mention your uh, website? I missed it. The website is is www.caphrodite.com. Okay, very good. So I want I have a few more questions to ask you before we get into the game. Okay. Uh, I do want to know what is your vision for the future of the collective? Do you have a grand vision for how you'd like it to grow? <laughs> Yes, I would love for community members to continue to see the worth of what we're offering here. I'd love to have events like um, study groups and and um, book readings and book clubs and and singing. In fact, we actually have a singing event here on Thursdays at twelve twenty every week. Um, and it's all voices are welcome and people just kind of drop in and drop out and we sing every, every Thursday at about 1220. Um, and, and really just invite my, my hope is that people start to say, well, I would like to have this happen in the community and, and I'd like to host it, you know, and they would then pick up those kinds of things so that, um, the small group of volunteers that we have here are not doing all the, well, this is what could be here. And this is what could be here. We really want feedback and we want interaction with the community. That so, sounds amazing. And, and so I've actually, well, yes. sorry, I've also been thinking about having um, regular kind of artisan type things in the backyard, because I think, you know, supporting uh, the whole idea of, that art can bring people together is um, 
it's just something that I've been thinking about for the future. Sounds like a great vision. So we mentioned a little bit about the coffee shop. I want to know more about that. You have it on Saturdays. What, how does that work? So on Saturday mornings from eight to about noonish, we usually, we stay open later if people are in there um, or if people are around and coming. Um, but we're, we, if the coronavirus would allow people to be inside, <laughs> we, would, we would be encouraging that quite a bit right now. Um, but the coffee shop has eco gifts. It's sustainable. It's vegetarian. Um, a lot of plant, mostly plant-based um, offerings. I shouldn't say mostly. They're all plant-based offerings, um, like pastries, and um, you can order pies for your holiday gatherings or your family gatherings. Um, you can order pastries. Really and does this all go back? into supporting the collective? This all goes back into supporting the collective. Um, everything's volunteer run. We, we don't have any employees as of yet. I think um, at some point it would not be a bad idea to have <laughs> someone running the, the place who can actually make a living it because I believe that, you know, that whole ideal is that we have, com we have volunteers, but it would be really great also to have, to be able to support someone's livelihood through the, through the cafe. So we have all kinds of, we have organic coffees that are, um, that are roasted here locally. All of our practices are sustainable even before they needed to be right. We have, um, wow. paper straws, we have art, art, local art and, and art gifts and, and sustainable types of gifts. Wow. So I do have a question. Mm -hmm. So as we talk about the food, how does vegetarianism, sustainability, and the eco shop intersect? And how does it all relate back to a sense of community, Ventura <laughs> style? <laughs> Ventura style, yeah. Well, you know, I grew up here in Ventura, and um, I moved here when I was six months. My mom moved me here when I was six months old. I didn't really have the capacity to do that myself. Um, <laughs> um, and you know, we live at the beach and our beach is really important to me. It's always been a very um, prominent part of our, our community. And so limiting the, the plastic use and the um, always having paper to go boxes or paper cups, really working towards no, you know, no waste. <laughs> yeah. And, and when we have food, we also have, um, like a lot of the food waste either goes to compost or goes to um, ranches where animals can actually eat the the leftover foods and yeah that sounds great the whole sustainability and eco gift shop and um, I believe brings an education element into our nonprofit which um, is is something that many places could do and and we're hopefully showing a way that other places can do this as well excellent excellent are you part of surf riders uh, ocean friendly restaurant we 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 are we were we are we are we were we haven't re-signed up for it but we do follow all of the the guidelines that the surf rider foundation Excellent. Oh, that's good. They were a, a guest of mine on a previous show. Oh, nice. I'm glad to hear that. You grew up in Ventura and you've seen some changes. How has your idea of community changed over time? And what are some of the things that build a sense of community now in contrast when you were younger? Well, um, that's interesting. I, I can answer that in the sense of um, when I was in my early 20s, I left Ventura and I was gone for about 10 years, maybe not quite 10 years, about nine years. And in that time, I learned about um, Waldorf education and oh. Rudolf Steiner and became a Waldorf teacher and um, also did a master's degree in speech and drama that was based on the basically the, the the forces the creative forces that are within the word and how we can actually um utilize those forces to create things in in beautiful ways 
And, and I think the, the connection with Rudolf Steiner and his philosophy or his way of life, which was called anthroposophy, really helped to show me how um, connecting with people or how important connecting with people is. And, and I believe that in a sense, my childhood had quite a bit of that, but our technology and our focus on technology has kind of taken us a long way away from connecting with people. And so in a sense for me, having a space where people can come and create, create community has to do with that, that whole journey through Waldorf education and learning about how, or maybe I should say relearning or reconnecting with how important it is to have heart to hearts, you know, to have conversations, to talk about things that are, have, have more than two perspectives, right? And looking at, at things from a holistic viewpoint, really um, how important it is to consider human beings as these threefold individuals that are, that are thinking, feeling, and also um, actively doing things in the world and not just, you know, little blips that are walking around or animals that are walking around or numbers that are walking around, right? And really truly connecting with the human being as, as something that is, um, that has the potential to grow. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to ask you my final question is, uh, where do you get your Ventura vibe on? (laughs) <laughs> Where do I get my Ventura vibe on? Well, I get it from uh, walking down the beach. I love uh, walking down on the promenade and um, also throughout the, the different neighborhoods. The, uh, I, I think that whole, um, I, I love that our downtown has um, opened up their Yes, there are businesses to the street, and I truly hope that that continues and that we can do something here in Midtown similar to that. Wow. So, yeah, that would be amazing. Yeah. All right. So I am going to shift gears here, and now it is time for our game. Since Caphrodite Community Collective was born out of a coffee house. The game is somewhat coffee themed. This is fun. Are you ready? I'm gonna... ready. <laughs> Actually, I am calling it Coffee Clatch Crumble. <laughs> Christine, list the top three conversation topics you might overhear while people are sipping a hot beverage. I think the top three might be something about philosophy, possibly something about literature, <laughs> definitely something about a cosmic, uh, a cosmic meal, especially in, in our cafe. Sounds awesome. <laughs> All right. Top three ways to reuse coffee grounds, you know, to promote sustainability. Absolutely. Put your coffee grounds in a cup and put them in the refrigerator. They're odor neutral neutralizers and you don't have to use um, uh, baking soda to do that. Your, your coffee grounds will neutralize any odors you might have in your refrigerator. Wow. Yes, it can also, it's a wonderful exfoliation for your skin. Um, I would use it on um, arms, legs, feet, hands, um, helps to get that soft uh, feeling back into your your skin. Not, not your face? You didn't mention face. Um, I didn't mention the face because I think the face is such a, a delicate um, area. I'm, I'm not sure I would use it on my face. Very good. Okay. And, and the last, uh, the last thing? Yeah. Number three would be so hard um i i actually i use it a lot in my warm bins they dance when they get those coffee coffee grounds <laughs> all right woo-hoo. thanks for playing my game and being such a good sport <laughs> <laughs> And now, 
now it's time for the community chess segment. In the past, I like to highlight opportunities for volunteering in the area. It's a little more challenging these days, but opportunities still exist. Christine, do you have opportunities in your organization? Absolutely. Um, we always are looking for volunteers who want to come in and work three to six hours on um, the days that we're op the coffee shops open. Um, so you can learn how to make coffee and or barista drinks. You can um, be a cashier. You can uh, work in the cleanup part. You can um, possibly even work in the kitchen, depending on whatever it is that you're interested in doing and your background. Um, yeah. And then you can also um, volunteer by spreading the word. You can actually take uh, flyers out for us and, and walk the neighborhoods or um, spread the word through email or social media. That's one way to volunteer. You can help with events. Um, yeah, those are my, the three top volunteer opportunities we have. That sounds amazing. Let, I'm going to have you give the website one more time in case people want to check in and find out how to volunteer. Certainly, it's caffrodite.com and that's spelled C-A-F-F, as in Frank, R-O-D-I-T-E.com. Awesome. Well, that's our show for today. I want to thank Christine Burke, co-founder of Caphrodite Community Collective, for joining me today and helping to spread the community spirit here in Ventura. Thank you, Nadine. It's been a pleasure. It's been so much fun. Thank you so much <laughs> for joining me. Thanks so much for listening to Ventura Vibe, a podcast dedicated to celebrating the community of Ventura, California. <laughs>